Let's start with reading two interesting quotes. Even at the time we wrote it, we were not doing it. It was part ambition, part approximation. People have really struggled to copy something that didn't really exist from an agile coach in 2011 working at Spotify. Second quote, it worries me when people look at what we do and think it's a framework they can just copy and implement. We are really trying hard now to emphasize we have problems as well. It's not all shiny and everything works well and all the squads are super amazing. From the co-author of a Spotify white paper, Agile Coach is there. People, employees working at Spotify in 2011 are telling you not to apply the Spotify model, not to copy the Spotify model. There was problems with the model. But unfortunately, truth doesn't spread as fast as lies that people want to believe in. <laughs> in this video, I'm gonna talk about the dangers of the Spotify model, why you shouldn't copy the model like thousands of companies have been doing for the past 10 years. First, what is the Spotify model? Well, in simple terms, it's a structure that Spotify was using 10 years ago to scale Agile across various teams located in different locations. That's a really simplistic definition of what the Spotify model is. We don't have time to talk more about that. If you want more details, check the description of this video. For now, I really want to focus on why this model doesn't work and what to use instead. Number one, it works there, so it will work here in the company. Quick trivia, how many companies do you know use the Spotify model? As per the book, read the description of this video, there's a PDF, read it, and tell me how many companies you know that follow this Spotify, so-called Spotify model. I know none, <laughs> no companies, including Spotify themselves, they don't use it. It's not really even a model. It's a snapshot of a state of a Spotify company in 2011, a snapshot. And people are trying to implement a snapshot, calling it a model, calling it a framework. No, it's a snapshot of a state of a company in 2011. Many things have changed 10 years in the future. They no longer use this model and people are still trying to apply it. Different people with different personalities, with different values from different different nations, cultures. At that time, the Spotify model worked for these people. 2011, it worked for these people and even Spotify stopped using the model now. And there's a reason for that that we'll cover in this video, but they stopped using it. Why do you think that this model will work for you? Different cultures, different nationalities, different values. It's not the same people we're talking about. Why would this model work for you? Why do you insist and persist in trying to implement this model? Number two, it's too fixated on team autonomy. If you have inconsistent ways of working, it's more difficult for people to move. If it's more difficult for people to move, it's more likely you have inconsistent ways of working. It will just reinforce until all of a sudden you're not really working for the same company anymore. You're working for some kind of weird sub culture. From an agile coach at Spotify, I have this YouTube channel. I also do coaching. I basically do everything alone. I do coaching, content creation, marketing, sales, everything alone. And it's also the case for small companies, people doing everything. There's no cross team dependencies because everyone needs to do everything. It's so small. But when the company grows, people start to focus, become more specialized in certain things, certain features. A team will work on a certain feature. They have the skill, the knowledge, the experience to work on this particular feature. They can't move across easily. Well, at least as easily as for smaller companies. And here's the problem. It creates dependencies, cross teams, dependencies. And we all know dependencies kill Agile, <laughs> kill Scrum. If you don't know how to handle them. Does the Spotify model define a process for cross team collaboration? No. When you allow teams to work in their own way, they are self-managed, they have organized, they can work in their own way. They also pick their own type of engagement. How they want to engage with other teams. So you have different teams with different types of processes to engage with each other. That's not what autonomy is all about. Autonomy doesn't mean that you let teams do whatever they want. No, you need clear processes, a working agreement on how to collaborate together. If you don't do that, productivity will decrease. Miscommunication will happen and you won't be able to deliver on your commitments. If I were to do one thing differently, I would say we should not be focusing so much on autonomy. Every time we have a new team, 
we have to reinvent the wheel in how we should be working. Maybe, just maybe, we should have a minimum valuable agility. You start with that, you are free to opt out, but people shouldn't have to opt in all the time. At what point do you start inserting this process? Probably when it's too late. From an agile coach at Spotify. Number three, it won't fix your agile implementation. Picture this, you're having some issues with your spouse, a lot of problems with your spouse. What do people typically do to solve this problem? Let's have a kid. <laughs> Let's have a kid to solve this problem. So you have tons of problems and, and the kid will magically solve everything. And same thing for your agile implementation. People don't know how to work in teams. They don't know how to self-manage, self-organize. They don't know how to work cross-team collaboration. They are not effective. They are not efficient. They can't deliver a working increment in six months <laughs> and you're telling them to use a model that tells you to deliver every single day. <laughs> put people into tribes, into chapters with the same manager, same management style and everything, boom, magic, everything will be fixed. No, maybe in the short term, it will be better. But if you don't fix the culture, people will go back to where it was. Number four, the Spotify model is not a model. We talked about that previously. It's a snapshot of the organization in 2011 snapshot that didn't work for them, <laughs> the model that didn't work for them, and you're trying to copy this snapshot. You can't transplant a snapshot in your organization. It doesn't work and it didn't work for them, but you can be inspired by this snapshot, by this model, be inspired by the beauty of agility, by the beauty of the way they implemented it, and especially the marketing side of things, the sales side of things. They were able to convince thousands of companies, persuade thousands of companies to use a model, to copy a model that didn't work for them. <laughs> There's three <laughs> things that I really like about this model and the way they implemented it. Three things, three takeaways. First, mistakes. Mistakes were okay. Look at the Spotify model. They stopped using it. Did we fire people because the model was wrong? No, they just iterated on the model, improved it. So the snapshot at the time is no longer in use. People are using something now, an improved version that works with their company, their type of people, their culture. And mistakes should be okay. Let people try things, experiment with things. Don't punish them, don't shame them, reward them because they are making mistakes. And then transparency. People should be able to trust each other, be transparent with each other, show the work, show the process, stakeholders showing what they do, directors showing what they do, being transparent with employees, the teams being transparent with the stakeholders, being transparent with the customers, everyone being transparent and everyone trying to trust each other and trusting each other. Trust takes time, it takes effort to trust someone, but trust is key. Autonomy is key. Being self-managed, self-organized, not micromanaging people, this is key. But obviously, you put some processes in place for cross-team collaboration, else it will be chaos. <laughs> but please let teams self-manage and self-organize. They are the expert. Don't tell them what to do. Which brings me to my next point. If you want more tips, insights on Agile, Scrum, personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now. And I'll see you in a few seconds.